as we set up camp in the forest. We were giddy with excitement about the night we had ahead. Our group consisted of three guys and three girls, all college friends looking for a night of fun and adventure. We brought along a cooler full of beers and hard liquor, and as soon as we arrived, we started playing drinking games. The forest was beautiful at this time of night, with the moon casting an eerie glow through the trees. I think we were in the middle of a game of Never Have I Ever, when we stumbled upon a cabin in the middle of the woods. It looked old and abandoned, but there was a strange energy emanating from it. We were all a little freaked out, to say the least, but curious. We decided to investigate, and we started creeping towards the cabin. As we got closer, we could see that the cabin was in disrepair. The windows were boarded up, and the door was hanging off its hinges. It looked like no one had lived there for years. We cautiously made our way inside, and it was clear that the cabin had been abandoned for some time. There was a layer of dust on almost everything, and the air smelled stale and musty. As we were exploring, we came across a room that was unlike any of the others. It was filled with these weird symbols and some odd-looking objects, including some jars that were filled with strange liquids and unidentifiable bones. Well, we were all a little freaked out, and we quickly left the cabin after seeing this, eager to put the creepy place behind us. So we got back to our campsite, and just continued playing some more drinking games and trying to forget about that cabin. But then, we heard a loud, angry voice coming from the woods. We all jumped at the sound of the voice, but we were so drunk, we just thought it was a prank. That was until we saw a bearded man charging at us with a machete in hand. He was screaming and hacking at our tents, slashing through the canvas like it was butter. We were all too terrified to move as he swung his machete again and again, screaming at us to leave his property. Finally, one of my friends managed to grab his attention and he turned to face him. It looked like he might calm down, but then suddenly he snapped again and started charging towards us with the machete. We all scattered in different directions, scrambling to pick up our things and get out of there. The man continued chasing, screaming and threatening us. It was pitch black, and we were all stumbling over roots and branches in our panic. It was then that I realised we were lost. We had run so far and in so many directions that we had no idea where we were. I was separated from the others, and I felt so alone. But that's when I heard the man's footsteps getting closer. At the time, I was hiding behind a tree, trying to catch my breath and figure out what to do next. When I heard the sound of gunshots, it was a sound that made my heart stop. I took off running again, but I didn't know where to go. I could hear the man's voice echoing through the trees, and just when I thought I was going to be caught, I saw a light in the distance. I ran towards it as fast as I could, and when I arrived, I realised it was a car. I collapsed on the ground, gasping for breath and shaking with fear. There was a man in the car, and I explained the situation. We waited outside the woods for a little while longer, until eventually, all of my friends managed to emerge from the trees, unharmed. While we were waiting, we did call the police and eventually they arrived. We gave statements and told them everything that had happened, and it turned out that the man who had attacked us was a recluse who had been living in those woods for years. He had a history of mental illness and violent behaviour, but no one had known he was still living in the area. We were lucky to have made it out alive, but the experience has left us all traumatised. I've always been an outdoorsman, but my wife and kids had never shared my enthusiasm for camping. That was until we moved to Canada, and they finally saw the beauty of the wilderness for themselves. We had decided to take a family camping trip, and I was so excited to share my passion with them. We packed up our gear and set off into the mountains. We had a beautiful spot by the lake and we spent the first few days fishing, hiking, and just exploring the area. For me at least, it was a perfect vacation, and we were all enjoying ourselves. That was until we noticed something strange. 
It started with small things like hearing noises in the middle of the night, which we all brushed off, thinking it was just the sound of animals in the forest. But as the days went on, things got more and more sinister. One night, we were all sitting around the campfire, when we suddenly heard a blood-curdling scream. It sounded like it was coming from deep within the woods, and it sent shivers down our spines. We all sat there in silence, listening for any other sounds, but all we could hear was the sound of the fire crackling. The next morning we went for a hike, and that was when we noticed that something was off. There were trees that had been knocked down, and the ground was littered with strange footprints. It looked like someone, or something, had been through that area, and it had left a trail of destruction in its wake. That night we were all in our tent when we heard something outside. It sounded like footsteps, and they were getting closer and closer. My heart was pounding, and I could hear my wife and kids whispering in the darkness. Suddenly there was a loud bang, and our tent was thrown to the ground. We all screamed, and I grabbed a flashlight and unzipped the tent, and that's when I saw it. A massive black bear was rummaging through our campsite, tearing apart our cooler and food containers. I tried to scare it away, but it just snarled at me, and I knew we were in trouble. We all huddled together, too scared to move. We could hear the bear breathing heavily, and we could feel its hot breath on our skin. We were frozen with fear, unsure of what to do next, but just when we thought it was over, the bear suddenly turned and charged straight at us. It was so fast that we barely had any time to react. I grabbed my family and tried to run, but the bear was too quick. It was right behind us, snarling and snapping its jaws. We were running as fast as we could, but I knew we couldn't outrun the bear, so I turned around to face it, ready to fight for my family. But that was when I saw something even more terrifying. A group of men had appeared out of nowhere, and they were armed with rifles. I noticed that one of them was aiming their gun towards my daughter, and I screamed at them to stop, but they just laughed and told us to get out of the way, like the whole thing was just one big joke. They fired their rifles, and the bear fell to the ground. My eyes were closed in response to the loud noise, but when I opened them again, I saw that we were all covered in blood and shaking with fear. Well, we instantly headed back to our campsite, and we packed things up and left, eager to get back to civilization. Well, after that experience, we never went camping again. So, when I was younger, my parents had forced me to join a scout group, which I never really enjoyed at first. But over time, I did make a few friends along the way which made the experience a lot more bearable. My scout group was nothing special. We would camp out every once in a while and learn about different types of knots and how to put up a tent. You know, the usual boring scout stuff. But after a year of biding my time and waiting until I was old enough to make my own decisions, I was completely and utterly shocked when our scout leader told us that they were organising a trip to the Borneo rainforest in Asia. All the parents would be coming along, and it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for my family. I mean, I'd never even left the US before, so the idea of going to a real-life rainforest on the other side of the world was so exciting. After a few months of organising, a date was finally set. Our airplane tickets were booked, and with the help of some of the other scouts, we'd managed to assemble all of the necessary gear to last us two weeks in the Borneo. So after a really long flight... We made our way to a hotel adjacent to the rainforest, and I spent the entire night looking out the window, just staring at the lush jungle that I would be exploring the next day. Well, morning eventually came, and we headed off into the wilderness. After a few hours of hiking deep into the rainforest, we set up our campsite by a clear freshwater stream. The views were sensational, and every single day was an adventure. We'd spend most of our time fishing, hiking, and my favourite part, telling ghost stories around the campfire. It was genuinely the perfect trip, until it wasn't. <laughs>
Now, the scout leaders had assured us that we were in safe territory, where there weren't too many wild animals. Where we were staying was mostly a tourist destination, where the local wildlife was used to humans and usually just left us alone. But on a particularly warm night, we started hearing strange noises coming from the trees. It sounded like something was moving around, but it was too dark to see anything. We thought it must be a wild animal that had accidentally stumbled into our campsite, so we all just stayed in our tents and tried to ignore it. The next day, we woke up to find that some of our supplies were missing. We searched the area, but couldn't find any signs of theft or wild animals. It was as if our gear had simply vanished into thin air. But we just laughed about it, assuming that it must have been a wild boar or something and we discussed how cool it was that we were surrounded by so much wildlife. But as the days went on, things got even weirder. My friend called all of us over and pointed in the direction of some strange symbols that were etched into the trees and on the floor. There was also a foul odour that seemed to follow us wherever we went. The consensus was that somebody had most likely stayed in our campsite before and had left behind some markings to say they were there. This made sense, so we really weren't that concerned. In fact, again we thought it was so cool, and one of the scout leaders even used the etchings as part of the night's scary campfire story. But later that night, after some of us had gone to bed, the scouts that were still up and sitting around the campfire claimed to hear something moving around in the woods again. This time, however, it was much louder, and it sounded like it was getting closer. Everyone started screaming, and we huddled together in our tents, scared out of our minds. Even the scout leaders looked puzzled, as they couldn't explain the noises that were emerging from the dark jungle. And then, suddenly, a group of men, dressed in next to nothing, burst out of the woods and charged directly at us. They were wielding crude weapons, and they had a wild look in their eyes. They started attacking our campsite destroying our tents and scattering our supplies everywhere. We were all screaming and running in different directions, trying to escape the crazed attackers. One of the scout leaders was shouting at the men, demanding that they stop. But the attackers just weren't listening. We were all terrified, and we thought that we would never make it out alive. But once the men were finished trashing our campsite, they turned to the adults and started shouting at them in a strange language. Nobody knew what they were saying. Even one of the scout leaders who spoke the native language was confused, as even he'd never heard it before. But thankfully, once they stopped talking, they stabbed a large spear into the ground and gave what seemed like a final warning as they disappeared into the rainforest. Well, we instantly grabbed what was left of our things, and we hiked as fast as we could until we found a ranger station. The rangers were shocked by our story, and sent a search party to investigate. Apparently, they found a cave near our campsite, and the strange symbols were there as well. But the attackers were nowhere to be found. Apparently, we had wandered into restricted territory, which explained the strange occurrences. But the rangers were still shocked to know that a wild human tribe existed, so close to the tourist site. Well, safe to say, I never went camping again after that experience and the scout troop quickly disbanded soon after we returned home. I try to look back on that trip with fond memories, but whenever I do, the very same night I will have a recurring nightmare of being chased in a forest, and I usually wake up in a cold sweat. So after pretty much documenting the whole thing in this story, I'm sure tonight will be interesting. I always loved camping in the great outdoors. There's something so liberating about being surrounded by nature, far away from the stress and chaos of city life. But my last camping trip was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. It was just me and my girlfriend, and we had decided to go on a secluded camping trip in the heart of the Rocky Mountains. We found a beautiful spot by a crystal clear lake and set up our tent. We had planned to spend a few days hiking and enjoying the scenery, and the first night was so peaceful 
we fell asleep to the sound of crickets chirping and the gentle lapping of the waves on the shore. But things quickly took a turn for the worse. The next morning we woke up to find that our tent had been ransacked, our food was scattered all over the ground, and our belongings were strewn about as if someone had broken in during the night and searched through almost everything. We were both so terrified, but we tried to rationalise it any way we could. Maybe it was just a curious animal that had sniffed out our food, but what happened next would say otherwise. As on the second night, we heard some strange noises coming from the woods. It sounded like someone was just walking around our campsite, but we couldn't see anything in the darkness. But what happened the next day still sends chills down my spine. We woke up to find a note pinned to a tree by our campsite. It was written in a scrawled handwriting, and we could only just about make out what it said. You're not supposed to be here. Leave now. My girlfriend and I were chilled to the bone, but we were determined to enjoy this trip. So stupidly, we stayed put. Well, of course, that was a mistake. As on the third night, we woke up to find that our campfire had been extinguished. We could hear footsteps circling our tent, and it was obvious that someone was there. We whispered to each other, trying to figure out what to do, when suddenly there was a scratch on the tent door. We froze, not daring to move or even breathe, but the scratching continued, louder and more insistent. There was a muffled voice which said, Let me in. You don't belong here. We were both trembling with fear at this point, but we just had to stay silent. The scratching did eventually stop, and then we heard the sound of footsteps walking away from our campsite. We decided to pack up and leave immediately, but as we were leaving, we saw something that made our blood run cold. In the distance, we could see a figure standing in the shadows, watching us with cold, unfeeling eyes. We ran as fast as we could back to the car, and we immediately reported what had happened. But even now, months later, I'm still too scared to ever go camping again. I mean, to be fair, that's certainly a trip that I'll never forget. But for all the wrong reasons. Camping always used to be by far my favourite thing to do. But after that day, I could never look at the wilderness the same way again. I had picked out a secluded spot deep in the woods, miles away from any sign of civilization. It was the perfect spot. There was a small stream nearby and plenty of trees to provide shade. I pitched my tent, started a fire, and I settled in for the night. But as the sun began to set, things started to get weird. I could hear these strange sounds, and then eventually, footsteps crunching on the ground. I looked outside my tent, and I didn't see anything, so I climbed back in and I waited to see if there were any further sounds. Well, after about an hour of nothing, I eventually went to bed, but I still couldn't shake the feeling that I wasn't alone. I tossed and turned, unable to fall asleep, and that's when, in the middle of the night, I heard a faint whisper. It was so soft that I couldn't make out what was being said, but it was definitely there. I sat up in my sleeping bag, straining my ears to listen. That's when I heard it again, but louder this time. It sounded like the voice was saying, Get out of here. I looked around, but there was no one there. Again, I peeked outside of the tent, and I looked around, but there was no one there. It appeared that I was all alone in the darkness, with nothing but my flashlight and my tent to protect me. And then suddenly, there was a loud bang on the side of the tent. I jumped, my heart racing, and I could feel the blood pounding in my ears as I listened for any more sounds. But there was nothing. No more whispers, no more banging on the tent. Just dead silence. I sat there, huddled in my sleeping bag, too scared to move. And then, slowly but surely, that same sound of crunching footsteps began to approach my tent. They were slow and deliberate, and I could hear each individual step. I knew I had to act fast, 
I grabbed my flashlight and unzipped my tent, shining the light into the darkness where the sound seemed to be coming from. But what I saw standing before me froze me in my tracks. There was a figure, tall and shadowy, with long arms and legs that seemed to stretch on forever. And worst of all, it had no face, just a blank, featureless void where its head should have been. I tried to scream, but nothing came out, and the figure just stood there, staring at me with its empty eyes. And then, in one swift movement, it darted away into the darkness, disappearing without a trace. I went and hid in my tent again, and I didn't get any sleep that night. But as soon as it became light again, I packed up my gear and got the hell out of there. I never went camping alone again after that night, and to be honest, I don't think I ever will. Don't get me wrong, the wilderness is still a beautiful and mysterious place, but sometimes it's best just to stay away. I was excited to be going camping with my friends for the very first time. It was just the four of us. It was me, Alex, Tom and Jake. We had all been planning this trip for weeks, and we couldn't wait to spend the night away from our parents. We hiked for what felt like hours, deep into the forest, until eventually we found the perfect spot to set up our tent. We pitched in a clearing, surrounded by trees that towered over us. It was getting late, but we were too excited to sleep. We started a small campfire and started roasting marshmallows and telling each other ghost stories, trying to see who could scare each other the most. But then we began to hear whispers in the woods. We tried to ignore it at first, thinking it was just our imaginations, but it didn't seem to go away. The whispers only grew louder and more insistent until we could no longer ignore them. At first I thought it was one of my friends playing a trick, but then we all looked at each other and could still hear the whispers, which is when we realised that this was real. We decided to investigate, and we slowly made our way through the dark woods, shining our flashlights around us. I guess we wanted to confirm that it was probably just an animal or something that we could explain, but that's when we saw it. A small, run-down cabin in the middle of the woods. It looked like it had been abandoned for years, but we could see a flicker of light coming from inside. Being young and curious, not to mention stupid, we decided to investigate the cabin. Don't get me wrong, I was scared, but it didn't seem like any of my friends were, and the last thing I was going to do was stay behind on my own. As we approached the cabin, we heard a strange humming noise coming from inside. It was low and almost musical, but there was something eerie about it. We hesitated for a moment, but then Alex bravely pushed the door open. The room was empty, except for a single rocking chair, slowly creaking back and forth. We looked around, trying to figure out who had been there and why they had left in such a hurry. But that's when we heard the sound of footsteps coming from outside the cabin. We quickly realised that we were not alone. We scrambled to our feet and tried to run, but the door was blocked by a large, hulking figure. We could just about see that it was a man, dressed in tattered clothes, with his face obscured by the shadows. He suddenly burst the door open and lunged at us, and we scattered in all directions, trying to get away. I could hear my heart pounding in my chest as I sprinted through the woods, branches and twigs scraping against my face and arms. When we finally stopped to catch our breath, we realised that we were lost. We had run too far and too fast, and we had no idea how to get back to our campsite, let alone back to our house. We huddled together, shivering with fear and cold, as the night grew darker around us. But then, that same sound of twigs snapping and leaves rustling was getting closer. We just stared at each other, praying that we would make it out of the woods alive when eventually the sound faded away, and it appeared, at least, that we were alone. We kept moving and stumbled around for what must have been hours, until finally we found our way back to our campsite. 
just as the sun was starting to rise. We were so relieved, but we also knew our job wasn't done yet. We quickly packed up our things and we headed back to civilization. Luckily, we managed to get out of the woods alive, but we never spoke of that night again. I still hear that same strange humming noise whenever I'm lying alone in bed, trying to sleep. Now, I've always loved camping, but the last trip I took was certainly one I'll never forget. It was just me and a couple of buddies roughing it out in the backcountry. I remember we had hiked for hours before we finally set up camp. The sun was setting at the time, and we were settling in for the night. I started a fire, and we sat around drinking beer and telling stories. It was a perfect night. The air was crisp and cool, and the stars shone bright above us. But that's when we heard it. A faint rustling sound in the bushes. We all froze, listening intently, but the rustling only grew louder and we could hear twigs snapping under feet. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the trees. It was a man, but he was unlike anyone I'd ever seen before. He wore ragged clothes, and his eyes were wild, darting around the campsite. Who are you? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady, not to show too much fear. But he didn't answer, and instead started walking towards us. We all stood up, unsure of what to do. But as he got closer, we could see that he was holding something in his hand. A large, rusty knife. We were terrified, frozen in place. He came right up to us and held the knife out in front of him, pointing it at each of us in turn. I could actually feel the cold metal against my skin at one point. You shouldn't be here, he said, his voice low and menacing. This is mine. You need to leave now. Well, we didn't argue with him. We quickly packed up our gear and left as fast as we could. We hiked all throughout the night, never looking back. But as we walked, every snap of a twig and every rustle of a leaf would make us jump. Eventually, we did make it back to civilization, but the fear had stayed with us. We still couldn't shake the feeling that that man was still somehow watching our every move. Days soon turned into weeks, and I started to think that maybe it was all in my head. Maybe it really was as simple as we had just stumbled upon a crazy old man who wanted us off his land. Which, I guess in a weird way, I kind of understood. But then, things started to happen. It was just small things at first, like a twig snapping outside my window, or a rustling in the bushes as I walked to work. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination. But deep down... I knew something was wrong, as one night, as I was lying in bed, I heard another noise outside my window. This time, it was a soft scratching sound, like someone was trying to claw their way inside my room. I got up and walked to my window, my heart pounding in my chest. I looked outside, but there was nothing there, just the darkness and the sound of the wind, but then I saw him. It was the very same man from the campsite. He was standing in the shadows, just out of sight, but I could see a glint of his knife in the moonlight. I quickly shut the window and locked it, but I could still hear him outside, telling me to leave and get off his land. I didn't understand. I mean, I wasn't even on his land anymore. I tried to convince myself it was just a dream, but at the same time, I couldn't quite bring myself to check the window again. I didn't sleep that night, and I didn't tell anyone what happened either, but the fear stayed with me, gnawing at my insides. I really did try to convince myself that that night was just a dream, and I was just being paranoid that the phone call started. It was heavy breathing on the other end of the line, and a voice whispering my name. And then, suddenly, I heard a twig snap behind me. I spun around, my heart racing, as I tried to spot the source of the noise. I could still hear the heavy breathing, but I couldn't see anything in the darkness. I called out, asking who was there, with my voice shaking in fear. But there was no response. I could feel my palms getting clammy, and I turned to run. But before I could take a step, I was tackled from behind. I hit the ground hard, my head slamming into the wall, 
and everything went black. When I eventually came to, I was lying on my back in a small clearing. My head was throbbing, and I could feel blood trickling down my neck. I sat up slowly, wincing at the pain in my head, but as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I realised that I wasn't alone. There were three figures standing around me, their faces obscured by shadows. Who are you? I demanded, but the figures didn't respond. They just stood there, staring down at me. I could feel the fear rising inside me, almost threatening to consume me. And then one of the figures suddenly stepped forward. As it came into the light, I could see that it was a man, but his face was twisted in a grotesque grin. Welcome to our little game, he said, his voice dripping with malice. We're going to have some fun with you. My heart sank as I realised that I was trapped with these strangers, and I had no idea what they had in store for me. I tried to stand up, but one of the other men pushed me back down. I was helpless at their mercy, and from the glint in their eyes, I could tell that mercy wasn't something that they were interested in. I knew I had to act fast if I wanted to survive. I scanned the clearing, looking for anything I could use as a weapon. I saw a branch lying a few feet away, so I quickly crawled towards it, trying to keep my movement subtle so as to not alert the figures. As I reached for the branch, I heard one of them laugh. Trying to escape, are we? He taunted, but I didn't listen. With my branch in my hand, I stood up and I swung at the nearest figure. It connected with a sickening thud, and the figure crumpled to the ground. The other two hesitated for a moment, stunned by my sudden attack. I took advantage of their confusion, and I ran towards the trees. I could hear them chasing me, their footsteps pounding on the forest floor. I didn't know where I was going. All I knew was that I had to keep moving. After what felt like hours of running, I finally stumbled upon a road. I could see headlights in the distance, and I had to flag down the car before the figures had caught up to me. I stumbled onto the road, waving my arms frantically and the car slowed down. The driver leaned out the window, and I shouted for him to help me, telling him how there were people after me, and luckily the driver didn't hesitate to unlock the doors, and he motioned for me to get in. I jumped into the back seat and slammed the door shut. I yelled for him to step on it as I looked out the back window. In the distance, I could see three men emerging from the trees, but the car was already too far away, and I breathed a sigh of relief. I was safe, but the memory of that night would stay with me forever. I still can't help but wonder who those men were, and what would have happened if I hadn't have managed to escape. There's just something about being out on the open water, alone with my thoughts and waiting for the fish to bite, that's so peaceful. So when my buddy invited me on a fishing trip to a remote lake in the mountains, I jumped at the chance. We packed up our gear and drove for hours until we finally reached the lake. It was stunning, surrounded by mountains with crystal clear water. We set up camp and got to work fishing. The first day was great. We caught a bunch of fish and cooked them over the fire for dinner. But that's when things started to get weird. As we were settling down for the night, I started to hear strange noises coming from the woods surrounding us. It sounded like something was moving through the trees, but it was too quiet to be a bear or any other kind of animal. My buddy didn't seem to hear it, so I tried to just brush it off as my imagination. I didn't want to say anything in case he thought I was crazy or, even worse, scared. But the noises eventually stopped and I was able to get to sleep. The next day we fished all morning and were having a great time but I think it was as we were heading back to camp, I noticed something in the water. The lake was completely still, not even a single ripple. It was like the lake had frozen over, but it was a warm, sunny day. I pointed this out to my buddy, and we looked at each other in astonishment, but eventually we just shrugged it off as a weird natural phenomenon. The rest of the day was normal, but it wasn't until that night that the noises in the woods started again but this time they were louder 
and more persistent. Again, I just tried to ignore them and go to sleep, but I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something more sinister at play. I whispered to my buddy to see if he was awake, but he was fast asleep. I sat there in fear for a while, but just like the night before, the sounds eventually stopped. Well, I didn't get a lot of sleep that night, and the next day I was extremely tired. The next morning we headed out to a fishing spot near the shore, but as we sat there, we suddenly heard a loud splash. We turned around and saw that something had jumped into the water. It was way too big to be a fish, and too small to be a person. It was way too big to be a fish. So we both freaked out and decided to head back to camp early. But as we were packing up our gear, I noticed something else in the woods. This time, it wasn't a sound, but a figure. Just standing there, staring at us. I couldn't quite make out any details. It was just a dark shape in the trees. I pointed it out to my buddy, but he didn't see anything. At this point, I started to doubt my own sanity. Again, I couldn't sleep at all, and the noises in the woods were so loud and persistent that this time I was sure that something was going to attack us. But suddenly, everything went silent. It was so quiet that I could even hear my own breathing. I was too scared to move, too scared to even open my eyes. I sat there for a while, as still as a statue, and the next morning, I grabbed my friend and demanded that we leave as quickly as possible. I tried to explain why I wanted to leave so abruptly, but I didn't want to sound too crazy, so I kept some of the more sinister details to myself. But as we were driving away, I looked back at the lake and saw something that made my blood run cold. Again, the water was completely still, but there was something moving under the surface. Something big and dark. I didn't say anything, and we just kept driving away. And I've never gone back to that lake again. To be honest, I don't think I ever will. There's definitely something out there, something that's not quite right, and I don't want to find out what that something is. I had to get out of there. I couldn't take it anymore. The fights, the screaming, the endless pressure to be perfect. So I packed up a few things and left home, not looking back. I didn't have anywhere specific to go, but I knew I needed to get as far away from my parents as possible. I decided to head into the woods, figuring I could camp out for a few days until I figured something out. The first night in the woods wasn't too bad. I found a spot to set up my tent and built a small fire to cook some food. The silence of the forest was a welcome change from the constant noise of my old life. I eventually fell asleep, and I've got to tell you, it was probably the best night's sleep I'd had in a very long time. The next day, I decided to explore a bit. I walked deeper into the woods, taking in the scenery and trying to forget about my old life problems. As the sun started to set, I realised I had gone farther than I intended, and didn't recognise any of my surroundings. I turned around to head back to what I thought was my campsite, but soon I realised I was lost. Panic quickly set in as I wandered aimlessly through the forest. As it got darker, I realised that I needed to find shelter for the night. I stumbled upon an old cabin and decided to take refuge there. The door was unlocked and I cautiously stepped inside, but luckily it was empty, save for a few pieces of furniture covered in dust. I felt so lucky, and a wave of relief went through my entire body. I had my sleeping bag on me, so I set it up on the floor and tried to go to sleep, but it didn't come too easy that night. Every little noise had me on edge. The creaking of the cabin, the rustling of the leaves outside, and the sound of my own breathing all seemed amplified in the eerie silence of the woods. I couldn't stop thinking about how I was completely alone, with no one to turn to if anything went wrong. Well, as I laid there, I suddenly heard something scratching at the door. It continued, slow and deliberate, and I held my breath, listening as it grew louder. It suddenly stopped, and I waited, afraid to move, and then, in the silence, I could hear somebody breathing heavily outside the door, and then it slowly started to creak open, and a black figure stepped inside. It was a tall, gaunt man with sunken eyes and long, matted hair. 
he stared at me with a chilling intensity, and I knew I was in trouble. Without saying a word, the man lunged at me, his hands outstretched. I grabbed the closest thing to me and swung a stick in his face. He stumbled back and I bolted out of the cabin, running blindly through the woods. I could hear him chasing me, but I did all I could and I ran even faster. Eventually, I must have lost him and I collapsed on the ground, gasping for air. My adrenaline had run out. I stayed there for what felt like hours, too afraid to move. It was as if I'd used all of my energy reserves, and I had nothing left. But after enough time, I finally mustered the courage to stand up and keep walking. I mean, what else was I going to do? I was so tired, but I just kept going, and I eventually stumbled upon what seemed to be a ranger station. I knocked on the door, and to my luck, a man answered it. They listened to my story, although they did look like maybe I wasn't telling the whole truth. But nevertheless, they helped me find my way back home. I didn't care whether or not they believed me. All I cared about was being safe. You know, I never did find out who that man was or what he wanted from me. But one thing is for sure. I will never run away from home. Again. Thank you for watching. And if you prefer the longer format videos, please let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to subscribe for more scary stories.